Standard surgery for fistulae usually excises the tract and closes the urethra and the skin separately. To stop wound breakdown, it's normal to interpose tissue, usually dartos, between the two suture lines. The patio repair uses a slightly different concept. Instead of excising the fistulous tract, it's preserved. And if it then is turned inside out, it creates a flat valve which stops ingress of urine into the fistulous tract and allows it to heal. For proximal fistulae with a long tract, it's easy to create the flat valve. This is a much more difficult problem. This patient has a very large and distal fistula and the tract is, won't be long enough to turn inside out and create a flat valve. To overcome this problem, we've elongated the incision around the proximal fistula to create a flap of skin which then can be brought out through the urethral opening and sutured back on itself. If you note here, the fistulous tract is completely hidden from the flow of urine which will allow it to heal. This is another patient with a very similar problem. He has a very distal, quite large uh, fistulae with really little more than a skin bridge um, to um, separate the fistula from the urethral opening. He's been unfortunate to have quite a major breakdown of his um, hyperspadius repair and has been referred in for his fistula to be repaired but using the patio technique. For. Distal obstruction is, must always be overcome and we pass a catheter to exclude this uh, but it's quite obvious to see. I use a stay suture which I put deeply into the glands to um, prevent any scarring afterwards. Here you can see the very large fistula um, in its position. We mark out the uh, skin flap. It has quite a bit of excess um, skin in this position so we can be quite generous in the amount of um, skin we use to create the um, skin flap. The skin is incised and the incision is extended circumferentially to enclose the fistulous tract. Speeded up here, you can see me dissecting out the skin flap and the tract. You have to be pretty careful here, quite meticulous in your dissection, because if you make a hole in the fistulous tract, it's going to be very difficult to do the operation and you probably have to do it by, repair it by a standard technique. However, it's usually very easy just to um, mobilise the fistula tract. Here we put a little fine polyglycan suture through the tip of the tract. The catheter is helpful at that point, but now it can be removed as we'll need to turn the tract inside out to create the flap valve. For this I usually pass uh, a fine nylon suture um, through the tract and out through the urethral opening and then tie it to the polyglycan stitch. This then allows the fish to the tract to be turned inside out. So the tract's been preserved and turned inside out, patio. Here you can see um, the tract coming out through the urethral opening. If you look carefully now, you'll see the entire tract is outside the urethra and therefore it's impossible for any urine to get in and um, cause recurrent fistulae. We suture the, the tract then to the, to the skin of the urethral opening. Here we pass some fine polyglycan sutures through the tip of the urethral meatus to the inside of the tract. The skin can now be closed, either horizontally or vertically, whichever seems the most appropriate. The stitch is then cut off, and the end of the skin flap is then brought out of the urethral opening 
and sutured to the skin more proximally. This should completely hide the fistula's track from any urine flow. And, the, and because of that, you don't need to use a catheter. Here you can see that there's no obstruction to urinary flow and the operation's over. By three weeks, because it has a narrow base, the skin flap necroses and eventually withers away. So that by three months after surgery, the fistula's track is healed and the skin flap is not visible. The final result shows a healed fistula. It produces an adequate, if not perfect, repair to the child's hyperspadias. The patio repair is easy to perform. It's done as a day case and the child does not need to have a catheter after surgery. It has a very high chance of healing fistulae which are very difficult to repair by any other means. Please note also that there is no suture lines going through the base of the tract. Fistulae tend to develop along these suture lines and their avoidance is important in the success of the operation.